Hey, what's up guys? So we just got a new firmware update for the bit axes, and this is a really nice change. Uh, we've got an all new UI, for example. If you've got multiple bit axes, the swarm is now working properly. There's been some fixes to the temperature sensor, which now gives us more headroom when it comes to overclocking and getting higher hash rates, which I'll go ahead and show you. Now there's quite a few changes here in this latest update, 2.4.0. And on the GitHub page, you can take a look at uh, all the different changes with this latest update. But in this video, I wanna focus on just a couple of them, some of the biggest ones that I noticed playing around with it. Now, right away when you dive into it, one of the biggest changes you'll notice is, well, the new UI, right? We have a new color scheme here uh, compared to what we had before with 2.3.0 and older. So this is what it used to look like. Uh, we had kind of these like round bars here showing us our voltage, uh, our temperatures and whatnot. Uh, they recently added some things like this uh, dashed line here in the middle that shows us kind of our average hash rate over time. Uh, this is available now on the new UI in addition to the color scheme, but you'll notice that uh, in addition to this bar here in the middle that shows us kind of our like average hash rate, they've also added one down here that shows us our ASIC temperature as well. Uh, furthermore, at the bottom, you'll notice that uh, these indicators that used to be like the round ones are now these horizontal bars. So they're showing you, you know, your power levels, your voltages, uh, what frequencies you're running, uh, temperatures, and all that kind of stuff here as well. Additionally, if we take a look at the swarm, uh, this is now actually going to work properly. Uh, there's an automatic scan option here, so it can actually go in and scan for all of the uh, bit axes on your network, and it's going to be able to automatically refresh and uh, give you basically new information every 30 seconds, which is really nice. So you don't have to like keep manually. Uh, refreshing as well. If we take a look at how this used to look, if we go over here to the swarm, uh, it basically used to have a bunch of like duplicated info. So like here's 1.56, 1.56, 1.56, 1.56, right? There's a lot of duplicate information here uh, that just it didn't work properly. So you can see I've got six bit axes, but way more <laughs> than six listed here. I can try to refresh and it does that. And you can try deleting stuff and re-adding them, but like the swarm feature didn't work properly. Luckily now, finally here with this new version, uh, the swarm is actually working properly, which I'm really happy to see. Next, there's been some improvements to things like the temperature sensor, for example. Uh, there's been some uh, kind of settings changes for the 1370s, the ASIC used in the gamma. Uh, and I've got a couple gammas loaded up here that I wanted to show you. So if we pull up one of those, uh, I'll show you kind of like some of the overclocking stuff that we've got going on. So I've got this one set up running at about uh, 1.3 tera hashes per second. Uh, if we take a look now at another one, uh, I've got this gamma running at 1.63 tera hashes per second. Uh, and then I've also got a third one that has a uh, argon thermal heatsink on it. This one's actually pushing closer to two tera hashes per second. Uh, so we now have a lot more headroom available uh, when it comes to actually overclocking these units. Now, uh, if you take a look, I've kind of been playing with this earlier. You can see a little bit of a jump here. I was noticing that uh, my average hash rate on this particular one that I've been pushing the most uh, was down closer to like 1.9-ish terahash, and I actually tried bumping up the, uh, uh, the voltage on this one, and it actually has gone up. You can see it used to be sort of down here, and now after that change, it's kind of up there. So I'm playing around with it, but basically, uh, we've got some additional headroom now when it comes to overclocking uh, these bit axes. Now, I wanna do a whole other video kind of talking about uh, this kind of stuff, but basically like the A6, for example, it'll still throw the overheat warnings and you get to like uh, 70 degrees Celsius. With the voltage regulator, you tend to wanna stay like under 100 degrees Celsius. This one is getting pushed pretty hard. You can see it's 100, maybe 101 or so. So I wanna add maybe some additional cooling. It's stuff that I'm playing around with, but uh, as you can see, we now kind of have more headroom available here if you want to start getting involved with any sort of overclocking here on the bit axis. Additionally, when the bit axe boots up, you'll actually see a bit axe logo displayed on the OLED screen, which is kind of cool. And if you'd like to update your bit axe to get all these new features, this update is now available. You're just gonna go over here into the settings section in Axe OS, and if you scroll down, uh, under check, you should see uh, 2.4.0 should now be available, and then you just download uh, both the firmware update file and the new website file, uh, and then just load them here, uh, update the firmware first, uh, let the bit axe actually uh, boot itself back up, kind of reboot, and then you'll be able to update uh, this website UI uh, as well. And finally, if you'd like to order a bit axe or maybe even some additional bit axes, uh, especially now that the swarm feature is working properly, I'll have some links in the video description to where you can order different versions of it. The bit axe gamma is the latest and greatest version with the highest hash rate, but there's other versions available too that are more affordable and have lower hash rates. So I'll put links to different versions if you wanna pick them up. I've covered some of the different versions in older videos if you'd like to check that out. Uh, and then moving forward, I wanna do some videos diving into some of the overclocking stuff as well if you'd like to play around with maybe even getting higher hash rates and more power out of the bit axe that you've already got. So subscribe if you haven't already done so, and you can also hit the notification bell to get notified as new videos go live as we talk more and more about these different bit axes. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys are doing great, and I'll see you in the next one.